So I'm going to do this as I discussed. In reverse, so even though the method here says shake and strain into a pint glass, what it's really saying is build in reverse, cheapest ingredient first, then an ice shake and strain. Before I get to the first ingredients, I want to talk about the Boston Shaker. All right? A lot of bartenders, get that out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing. So let's say I build the cocktail in reverse. Put ice on top of that, put it on top. I see a lot of bartenders do that. I'm saying this, I don't want you guys to do that either. That is not enough ice when the liquid is to here. That is not enough ice. We need at least halfway, if not three quarters full of ice. Proper dilution. My goal is to get this thing really, really cold and add about an ounce to an ounce and a half of water. If I use less ice, it means more ice is going to melt to get it cold. So adding ice to the top of that is not good enough. I want you to get about three quarters full of ice, take that cocktail, pour it over the top, and give it a good seal. We are not just kind of holding it together and shaking it here. No shaking weights. We are going to shake cocktails in such a way that we are engaging the guest. So the average bartender, I walk up to the bartender, makes a drink. How's it going? Be with me in a second. There's nothing going on here, and there's nothing going on with the way I shake it. We want people to respect us and want to introduce from us. So the way we shake is going to determine our passion for the job. So I'm going to show you several different shakes. So the shake that I used to do, now I feel very lopsided. This hand doesn't know what to do. If I'm really busy, then it's great that I'm pivoting around and doing a lot. In general, I want it to be a two-handed shake. So the shake that I've been using for most of my life, I have a little rock in my step, I go back and forth, it's just what I do. But then I learned, I got to see some friends, I saw how they were shaking, and I, and I practiced, and I practiced, because I'm a white boy, I got no rhythm. So I shot it up, and I shot it down. It sounds nice, it sounds good, like about 10 times. At the end of the day, what I want from all of you, I want you to hold it with two hands. I want the tin part facing out, not the glass part, the tin part facing out. Never add the guest down the bar. And really, it's about pushing and pulling. You want the drink to get from one side to the other. Push and pull. That's a very simple shape right there. Nothing wrong with that. If you want to be up here, that's fine too. Whatever feels comfortable. Just no shaker weights and no back and forth like this. We want to get it from one side to the other. So I'm not asking you to dance and shoot and shout and scream and jump up and down, but to get a drink cold, to go out 10, ten part time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's about what it takes you to drink nice and cold. Fair enough? Now when I did this, metal's a great conductor of heat. It's swung, it's tight, it's really sealed here. In your bartending careers, has anybody ever had this get stuck? They're banging around the bar, right? Can't do it, help me out, how do you open it up? I'm going to teach you all how to do it. If you already know how to do it, I'm going to teach you how to teach somebody else. I'm going to give you the verb, the words to use, okay? So when I dropped it and snacked it, I got a bit of an angle going. Y'all see the angle? Yes? Yes. Smooth metal touching glass right there, no gap. Opposite that smooth part is the largest open. It's like a clock. 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock. 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock. 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock, halfway between those are what I call the sweet spots. Anybody here left-handed? So for left-handed people, it's all about 9 o'clock. Smooth part here, smooth part's always facing me as the bartender. I'm right-handed, so I'm looking at 3 o'clock. For you left-handed people, it's a switch up and it's here. The sweet spot is here, for me the sweet spot is here. When I say sweet spot, the hardest part of my palm is right here. I'm going to hit it halfway between 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock at that gap. Hardest part of my palm, right there. It's like a car accident, okay, people? That's a car, that's a car. This is you in the front seat with no seatbelt on. The two vehicles hit, you fly through the window, correct? Break the seal, it comes apart. Every once in a while, you get a Boston shaker where this is really close to the top, and if I hit it, it can fly off. So, if you're so when I do it, I hit it, it immediately follows through. It's a boom, boom, one full swoop, right? I catch it as, I, as it's happening. If you're concerned, if you feel comfortable, if two fingers above, two fingers below, because you're holding it, 
break it like that so it can't go anywhere. What you can't do is hold it firmly in your hand and hit it because your hand is now absorbing all the shock. Does this make sense? It's more muscle memory. If you're not currently doing it, take some practice. You get that popping sound. Let the cocktail drain inside. Dirty side facing up. Clean side facing down. If something is facing up, it's been dirty. I made simple syrup with this. It's dirty. I need to wash this off. It's facing up, it's dirty. Yeah, it's down, it's clean. That's why everything starts here. As I'm done, then we drink, I wash out, I bring it back so it's, it's, it's clean and draining down. And every, if, I, if, I, if I shake a drink, a Cosmo, a lemon drop, put it down, and that's going to become a sticky mess down here. So we don't do that. We always leave it up so we can wash it. Alright. I think we're good. Now I'm ready for the first drink. So we're going to do the, uh, the Mandarin sweet tea. Uh, it calls for an ounce and a half of iced tea. I'm going to use that as the last ingredient. I don't want to shake the drink with the iced tea because it's basically adding water to the cocktail. I want you to taste the iced tea. If I shake it with the iced tea, it's going to further melt the ice. So I'm going to treat it as if it was carbonation and I'm going to add it at the very end. So I'm going to do half, uh, one, half ounce, uh, sorry, one ounce of simple syrup and a half ounce of lemon juice. One ounce of simple syrup. It's a citrus press, a lime press, lemon press. This is not like a child's toy where it's round. So that's round, so it does not fit inside. That's not the way you do it. You do that, you squeeze, the juice goes in your face. You're basically turning it inside out. Putting the lemon in here and squeezing. There are two types of citrus presses. This one is made for limes or small lemons. This one, oftentimes yellow in color, is larger, designed for lemons. It's all outside the food. If you only have one and the lemon happened to be large, I'm going to put it in an angle, use my thumb here to hold it in place so I can guide it. Again, I've chosen to nip off the end of the lemon to give myself more surface area to fight against to get the juice out. If I left that nipple on there, it would be fighting against that. I'm going to have half ounce of lemon juice. This is, in my hand, a two-handed tool. It is not designed like a garlic press to squeeze. Top and bottom push it together. There's more juice inside this lemon. I'm going to save this lemon for the next cocktail. I'm not going to throw this away because there's still juice inside it. Half ounce of lemon juice. Uh, one ounce of orange juice. An ounce and a half of kettle one orange. I'm going to actually measure out my iced tea. Ounce and a half. I'm going to set this off to the side. I'm going to make this cocktail, hopefully it will fit beautifully inside this glass. Uh, the garnish is the lemon wheel. So I talked about wheels and sunken garnishes earlier. The reason I make these so thin is so I put it inside, it will stay with the curvature of the glass. I could just choose to use one or two. I'm going to go for some visuals here. So I'm laying them down, holding the glass this way. My idea here is to get the ice to fall on top of it. That would work. doesn't always work the first time. Try the second time. So my thought is, I'm immediately selling the cocktail. I put this down and make my drink. It's already going to kick somebody's eye visually with those wheels sitting inside the glass. Right? So I, mix, I ice the glass, I ice my tin, pour the liquid over the top of the ice, give it a seal. About 10 times, break that seal, the cocktail dip inside, dirty side facing up. I'm now going to take my iced tea and pour it on the cocktail. I put it over the drink at the end, it's going to be floating on top. I want it to be incorporated. So now when I strain it, it's all going to blend together as I strain it. Fits perfectly in the glass. All the iced tea mixed in. So now the idea is you guys will all come up here, grab a straw, dip it in, tap it off, and taste the cocktail. <laughs>